This is Don't Panic, Episode 1, recorded June 18th, 2013, on iOS 7, the NSA, and Internet Balloons. Okay. Um, it's that time <laughs> of the week. It's, uh, we the are time here of so... The week that never happened before today. No. We are here so you don't panic. That's right. We're here for another episode. I'm Sean Jennings. Uh, I'm Colby Ravenue. I'm Dan Miller. And we have got a plethora of stories to cover this week, uh, all about gadgets, the internet, and you. It's very exciting. So why don't we kick it off with a big story. This has been huge the last couple weeks, and that would be uh, WWDC, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. Uh, really the only like super official um, Apple announcement that's ever on the schedule. I mean, there are others, but this is the one we kind of know about in advance. So a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, um, and finally they had the announcement. So I was thinking we could just go down the list, talk through a few of them. What do you guys think? Sure. Sounds good. All right. Where should, where should we start? Well, let's start with the hardware. So um, MacBook Air gets Haswell, uh, all-day battery life. They're claiming 12 hours, <laughs> oh um, and we're going to see an increase in graphics performance as well. Um, but that all, again, comes from Haswell. So not a huge change, just a processor change. But, um, you know, I've seen several uh, gadget blogs call the MacBook Air one of the one of the best, if not the best, notebook they've ever reviewed. Uh, Colby, I know you have a MacBook Air. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty jealous of the battery. But, I mean, at the same time, I already get, like, seven hours of battery. So, I mean, rarely... I guess I would just never charge it. It might it might even be bad to be honest, because then I'd like I'd I'd go the entire day without charging it and not charge it the next day, and then I'd be screwed. <laughs> so, you get in a lot of trouble. I don't know, but yeah, so it's okay. I'm I'm not like running to the store to buy a new one. But it will become the new sort of go to Apple computer. I mean, it, you know, most people want mobile, um, so you know, the Air is sort of that baseline. System, so that'll be great. Uh, the other, the other big hardware, uh, new Airport Extreme and Time Capsule, which I don't think anyone really cares about. And the, um, stop me if I'm wrong. And but the big uh, shiny new reveal was the Mac Pro sneak peek, uh, <laughs> which was not any kind of formal product announcement, but rather just this sort of like Goliath. Darth Vader, <laughs> like trash can, trash can. silly, yeah. you know, but we've really all... small, so more David than Goliath. In that That's respect. true. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks really cool. As does you know? That's what Apple's good at. They make it look good. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine how much it's going to cost, though. Maybe uh, they should have left it big to justify. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a dual AMD GPUs. Uh, Thunderbolt 2 and uh, up to 3 4K display, and it's, uh, of course, smaller, thinner than the old Mac Pro. Um, they're saying sometime later in 2013, I've seen estimates with the machine ranging anywhere from $4,000 to $6,000, depending on configuration. I would say $5,000. That's where I'm setting it. Right you're, you're, you're putting it out there. Yes. You're making the prediction. <laughs> yep, $5,000. You heard it here first. $5,000. <laughs> Fact. We should we should have asked Joey and Greg if they know. Yeah, that would have been smart. I'm sure they <laughs> do. Start out the first episode with like a <laughs> leak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other big announcement with that is that it is a made in America product. Um, they made a little bit of a big deal about that. That's kind of cool. I think so. The two big draws of this one is that it looks really cool, but unlike most every other Apple product, this is probably the one you're least likely to see ever. Like, where is it going to be? Buried under your desk. Or maybe I guess you could keep it on top of your desk, but why bother? Yeah. Uh, so that takes away part of the appeal. $5,000 is a lot of money. Uh, and I don't... I don't. Th you don't see any other cool Thunderbolt accessories or add-ons right now. Well, and that's what's yeah. interesting about this. This is the first to come with Thunderbolt 2. Um, Which only makes it do 4K. It has no other benefit. It's only increased screen resolution, not bandwidth or speed or anything like that. does play into their target market, though. A lot of people who buy the Mac Pros are video editors, uh, yeah. 
photo uh, photographers. Um, you know, I don't think we're necessarily the target market. Um, <laughs> if I had five thousand dollars, I probably wouldn't buy a Mac Pro. But um, I agree. you know, I think they've been waiting so long uh, for a new Mac Pro that I think I'm sure it'll sell perfectly fine. I also I, I was kind of surprised I have, haven't heard anyone like bad mouthing it aside from the like like occasional trash can jokes. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I mean, it's a design choice. People are gonna like it. People are gonna hate it. We'll come yeah. up to that when we come to iOS seven. I guess we'll see. Um, another big announcement: OS X, uh, ten point nine Mavericks. That was one of my favorite parts of the keynote was when they joked that they were running out of cat names. So they put up uh, OS X Sea Lion. And, and people uh, still clapped because they clearly believed it and thought it was <laughs> I, I thought it was real. And I'm like, that's such a funny, like, smart name. I thought the whole presentation was actually really light and kind of funny for Apple. It, it, was, it was very, like, self-deprecating almost. Like, they yeah. were, they were it, I mean, it was funny. I enjoyed it. They made a lot of jokes about, uh, you know, no no cows were harmed in the making of this, you know, mentioning the leather stitching and the, you know, a green felt free zone about Game Center. So yep. it was a lot of jokes. Um, yeah, it was a very different Apple than what we've seen before. I really yeah. like uh, the first guy, or not the first guy, I guess, the guy who did the Sea Lion announcement. I don't know what his title is or what his name is, but he was really good. He wasn't wearing black. And jeans, which <laughs> was true. also shocking. It was a very, uh, I almost want to say Google-like announcement. Like, yeah. that could have been at I.O. about, you know, Android, and I totally would have believed it. Yep. Yeah. I, I think they just, like, they kind of, like, after the last couple, I think they kind of realized that, like, the traditional, like, the Steve Jobs keynote, just, like, it doesn't work without Steve Jobs there. So, I don't know. I'm all for that. It was cool. More fun for us to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mavericks. Now, I am a Windows user. Uh, You guys are much more into Mac than I am, so I'll refer to your judgment. Um, Tags and tabs in Finder. I don't use Finder. I don't use Finder either. (laughs) I use a terminal. Wow. Oh, that's right. I forget. We have actual computer users. Yeah. (laughs) Um, multiple displays. I'm sure you guys are excited for that. Yes. Yes. Because no, I know that's been long overdue. Even Steve. if you have three monitors hooked up in the current state of things, if you full screen one app, your other two monitors turn to gray felt. And there is no more gray felt in Maverick, so they had to Wait. make it do something. There isn't. What? They took it out of the notification thing. It's nowhere. So, so what does the notification thing look like now? Uh, it's... I don't remember. I don't know. Also, well, notifications uh, have Android-style replies, so you can, uh, for example, get a tweet in and respond to it within the notification. Yeah, yeah works for FaceTime messages, email. You can yeah. do it all. Now, all like, I <laughs> I just opened up my notifications window, and I have like every notification I've gotten in the last six months. Yeah, so, so I'm hoping they like go away or something when you look at the application, or we'll see. see yeah, it's there. it's supposed to sync with iOS, and it's but you know when it comes to iCloud, a lot of promises and. Yeah. Now, do, does that mean that any iOS app can send notifications to your computer? Yes, that's what was announced. Assuming that's awesome. Were... Now, does it does it is it like maybe this is something. They they probably didn't say, but like, do do you just get notifications that would go to your phone, or or do you, do they have to specifically like send it to your computer? The main keynote I don't think went into that much detail, but from what I understand, it's supposed to sync across devices. You read it on one, it marks red on the other. But again, a lot of promises. Yeah, that is the dream. That's cool. Um iWork goes into the cloud. We now have iWork uh, in your browser, Safari, Chrome. Uh, I got, I got the, Explorer. I got invited to the beta of that today. It's, it seems to work pretty well, for all the word processing that I'm gonna do <laughs> now, now that I'm not in college anymore. 
my first thought though when I heard this was A, who uses iWork, and B, I, I, between Google Docs and Office 365, I don't, like, too late to the party, I well, don't... I use I use iWork only because it was cheaper than Office. Significantly more, cheaper. Yeah, by, like, a sixth of the cost, but more feature-rich than Google Docs. So if you want to do nice typesetting and custom yeah. layouts and... People, people certainly use Keynote a lot. Yes, yeah. and Keynote For... is amazing. Like, I, I could go back to Word just fine. Uh, Excel's the best. Outlook's even pretty great, but I could never go back to uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I also, I felt like the th it was one of the many Apple announcements of that day where I was like, oh, iWork isn't already in the cloud? Because I thought it was. Or could you only just view uh, your documents before and now you can edit them? I don't know. Maybe. Or was there something like it before that was called something else? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't remember. But but then again, I don't. Yeah, I don't it ever seemed know. like something that already existed. That and the maps when they announced that you could use maps from the desktop. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that you couldn't do that. <laughs> and, then, and then I thought, why isn't this a web app? Uh, it is really cool, though, that you can send directions from your desktop to your phone. Yeah. That's pretty nifty. Uh, yeah. And iBooks. I was why yeah, that, I didn't realize that you couldn't read iBooks on OS X. <laughs> that's why I bought a Kindle. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of catch up. It's it's playing a lot of catch up yeah. to to things you just kind of offhandedly <laughs> assumed were there. It's yeah, like, they do. They they get into some weird stuff sometimes. Like it's like that. Like they the books thing. Like that was a huge part of the iPad. But you, and you can like you can buy books in iTunes, but you can't read them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that just goes back to how weird and terrible iTunes is. Oh God! It's like so. Wait, what the does it do? Poster <laughs> child of feature creep. Holy, it manages yes. your music and your books and your ringtones and your uh, games and your documents and your podcasts and your notes and. <laughs> I I feel like a part of that though is it like having Windows su like supporting Windows for the iPhone stuff like. It's like it would have been one thing to create a bunch of different applications for the Mac, but then like you would have had to write a bunch of different Windows apps too, and then yeah. But don't call it iTunes. They haven't been afraid of rebranding things in the past. That's true. It's so much more than music now. It's certainly the case. And we all know how chunky and uh, not fun the software has become on Windows. It really would make sense to sort of go through and and, and on OS ten for that matter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, unless anyone has anything else to add on Mavericks. Cool name. I don't know cool. why it's plural, but you only like one Maverick. I. What? No. Yeah. Did... Every time I say it or read it, I just get this little twitch. Mavericks. OS ten Mavericks. <laughs> why? It is. It is weird. OS ten Leopards. It's like no. <laughs> what what's the what is a, a maverick so in this they're named after California places that yeah. Apple, Apple Tonians really like and apparently Mavericks is a like beach for surfing that has really high waves and is also incredibly dangerous somewhere mm -hmm. apparently it's called Mavericks or the Mavericks or something okay alright I've That's never all been I've there. Got. Maybe I'll go there someday. <laughs> I I don't know. It looks scary. Almost as scary as iOS seven. <laughs> <laughs> iOS seven was the uh, was sort of okay, the okay, okay. marquee, the big announcement uh, of the show, and of course the single, uh, perhaps biggest thing, or at least the one you're most likely to notice, is the overall redesign. Um, I am gonna not use the right words because I'm not Johnny Ive. I'll do what I can. Um, it has Sir a, Johnny Ive. Sir Johnny Ive. Uh, it has a flatter... Night of the round table. <laughs> more stylized look 
The whole palette has become brighter Light of the rounded and corners. simpler. <laughs> um, I don't... I First thoughts. Dan, I'll refer to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of people hate it. I, I haven't used it, and I'm not a designer, and I'm terrible at this, so what I say has no bearing. But I did hear someone somewhere describe it like, uh, oftentimes you want to, as in design, you want to make things look uh, exciting, and making things look young is exciting. And while the original iOS design was exciting at the time, it's now seven years old. It, it still works fine, and it's not a bad design at all, but if you want to uh, hand someone an iPhone 5S and say, you need to get this phone, what are they going to do? The hardware isn't changing anymore. The hardware is no longer the uh, differentiator, so you're going to have to make new software to sell your product. And the best, the easiest way to do that is to make it look new and exciting and young, which, which I think they did. It looks new. It looks completely different. Uh, the colors are definitely young, exciting, bright colors. So I like it. I haven't used it. It looks pretty. I'll say. It looks like something I would like to have in my phone, but I also don't know how well it works. And I think Colby does know how well it works, at least now. Yes. Um, do you want I Sean, do you do you wanna give give your your thoughts before I because I, I, I my uninformed are, are we bearing the lead by having Colby go before Sean? Is that the idea? <laughs> I'll I'll jump in. Yeah, I think I think you should you should take this, Sean. All right, All right I'll jump in. Uh, I have a sampling up here on the screen through the magic of technology, Whoa. and um, I I always yell at people when stuff changes and people for you know Facebook will change their search box a little bit and everyone goes change it back change it. I hate those people. <laughs> I really do. They get on my nerves. And I know every time Apple announces something, the day of, I have a split-second opinion, and then two weeks later, I almost never have the same opinion. This happens every time they announce something. I'll love something, and two weeks later, I'll hate it, or I'll hate it, and two weeks later, I'll love it. So I'm glad we're doing this a couple weeks after the announcement. When I sat there watching it, my immediate reaction was, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. It takes the design to a place... I think some people would say it looks pretty. I think it looks almost childish and very simple. Not that the old iOS was necessarily beautiful or you know gorgeous or outstanding. It was functional. It good, was good for what it was, and it, I'm not going to disagree. It didn't need a redesign, but this new look with the with the transparency and with the brighter colors and the icons. I hate half them. Um, all <laughs> I joked to somebody. I said all this announcement really made me want to do was go out and buy an Android phone, because <laughs> all this really did was show me all the things I like about Android mixed with a bunch of crap I don't like. And that sort that was sort of my split second. Two weeks later, I don't. I'm a little more on the fence. I really want to use it, and that's why I want to hear what you have to say, Colby. But you know, some new features like Control Center and you know multitasking. I'm you know iTunes Radio. I'm glad to see, and we'll talk about those in detail. But just the overall design, just is kind of like meh, eh. I'm not really grabbing me. I don't know, Colby. Your thoughts? Yeah. So um, tell me how I, wrong I am. <laughs> well, you're not that. You're not as wrong as you could be. Or normally um, am. Yeah, I was. I was. There's a ring nice. endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's usually wrong. <laughs> um, so I, I like. I guess sometime like in, in during the fall semester, I was messing around with iOS. So I like paid for the iOS developer membership, and I didn't remember till the day of the keynote, and then I was like. Oh, snap. <laughs> so I downloaded iOS 7 immediately and put it on my phone. And I, I kind of, like, I, I I hated it at first. Like, it looks weird. I, I, I'm with you. I don't like the icons at all. I think they're terrible. Like, I can't, I, I honestly, I can't think of one that's, like, better. The camera? I like it. I thought the, the old one was really well designed, actually. It was kind of neat. It had the little lens, but, like, 
they joke that they're going away for the skeuomorphism, then why do they have to put an actual camera on the yeah. icon? That's yeah. the exact opposite of the intended effect. Yeah, I don't. I mean, maps is okay because it just looks like a map, but like the calendar one is just weird. I don't uh, know. Was it the game center with the little colored bubbles? Yeah, that one I don't understand. <laughs> and that's that's like the game center app looks like. I'm gonna show you this because it's weird. <laughs> I don't want to break your NDA, Colby, because I think you did sign one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. I, I won't show Who that. Cares? No, you totally should. Do there it. are photos online. Do it. Oh, yeah. It's it's like... No! Oh. It's like bubbles, and you click on them. Um, but, all right, so so partially for that reason, I hated it. Um, and, it, like, it's certainly... It, it's quite apparently not done. Like, there are things that just don't make sense, and there are things that don't work, and there are... It's, like, things that just aren't done. Like, the like you know, the date selectors and stuff? Like, they work the same, but the the font is tiny, and they're, it's so hard to use because it's too small. I heard um, some complaining about the, the font being difficult to read. Looks better than it works. Yeah. It's like white on white. Well, yeah, it's that it's that like super light like Helvetica new thing going on, which it looks cool, but it, like the the practicality of that is is questionable. Um, but other than that, and the fact that it crashes like you know once every two hours, um, <laughs> it's like once it's I like start back on Android. Yeah, like I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff to work out. Like I think I think the icons are bad and and some of the overall design is bad but like some of it's really nice like the the lock screen is almost just your picture now which is mm-hmm. like it's really cool have you used that thing where you tilt it and the photo yeah yeah it's it's i mean that's like you almost never notice it but when you notice it you're like oh that was cool <laughs> what um, about the new like camera app once you actually go to take a picture what do you mean it's, doesn't that look significantly different now? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like plainer, and you can you can like swipe through the modes, which is kind of nice. But so. Colby, you you still have your 4s, right? Yeah. Uh, the 4s does not have one of the camera features. Oh, really? Which one? I'm trying to remember. Um, filters, I think. Do you have filters? All right, let's let's find out right now. So I have oh, what a stupid feature. I have video, photo, square, and pano, and then I thought I had, do you remember how you like bring up filters? Um, no. Launch Instagram. No. <laughs> oh, sing. <laughs> I just I decided to give Instagram a shot on a slightly related. I don't know. I I thought I could have I could have filters because I I feel like I did it, but. Okay. Seems like a, a silly feature to exclude from a phone. Well, if it doesn't have the doesn't have the horsepower like, the to 4S, do it real time. <laughs> the 4S can do like the HDR stuff, right? Or and yeah, but I mean the the, H, the HDR it just takes a it takes a photo it takes two or three photos and then stitches them together after. And I think the filters are like applied in real time. But I I swear I tried it. I just don't remember how to bring it up. Okay, um, but I'm, I'm trying to find out what you get and what you don't get, and it's not. Apple's website is showing me giant, huge pictures and shiny things. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Filters are available on the iPhone five only. Oh, okay. No, wait, no. Uh, it says. Oh, filters. Okay, so you can add a filter after the fact in photos, but you cannot use a live filter in the camera app unless you have an iPhone 5. I guess that makes sense. I will also point out that AirDrop, which is another feature, is iPhone 5 only. Um, and what? Siri continues to be only iPhone 5 and 4S. Uh, so, you know. Why is, why is I was looking it? forward and, to AirDrop. Yeah, that I think that has to do with um, Wi-Fi Direct, and I don't know if they... I'm, my guess is that they changed the radio. Uh, between models, so it may be an actual hardware thing. I don't know for sure. Shmoopy. Sadness. That's just a random assumption on my part. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, so, but so very some very exciting changes though. You can put as many things in a folder as you want. 
Yay! <laughs> can, can, you, can you get rid of the Stocks app? You can't get rid of it, but oh. you can put it in a folder and never see it again. Um, and you can also put Newsstand in a folder, which is super cool. Um, it downloads updates, app updates, in the background automatically. I love Yay. that. Which is great. Like, you get a notification, like, Facebook and Twitter and Google Maps were updated. And I was like, John McCain what? is so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, he must be thrilled. Um, what's... I th- there, there was one other thing that I, I can't remember now. Oh, you can block people. So, like, I you can block, like, contacts. So I've been getting, for, for, like, three months now, I've been getting, like, this credit card collection call from someone. I mean, it's clearly not me, and they just use my phone number or something. Um, and I just blocked it, and I, I haven't heard from them again. Nice. So, that was super cool. And then the like the control center thing that you swipe you can swipe up from the bottom. Yeah, have you been using have you been using that? Um yeah, I do. Cuz so actually that's one of the things like that was like the main reason I had my phone jailbroken before. Yeah, SB settings um, was great. Yeah. So I I've been using that um I mean one like I wish you could change what what the shortcuts are, which I'm hoping that's like something that happens later but we'll see um i assume not it likely. won't be <laughs> yes that's not, that's not a very apple thing to do but it, it's nice because i can i can go in and like turn on the bluetooth easily for like my fitbit because that it, when it's on it just drains the battery um and there's turn like wi-fi off when you leave the house yes there's there's also a flashlight button in there um and you can you can have that like you can set that to be accessible from your lock screen without unlocking the phone, so you can swipe up at flashlight. Oh, that's cool. Um, which is nice. Um, but th- those are my three things like that make it worth it, even though I don't. And I'm not entirely thrilled with the <laughs> with the design. Yeah, yeah. Um, other things I'll just quickly mention as far as changes go. Um, Siri has been updated with a new look. Um, I don't. Do they add, add any actual features to Siri? I'm gonna. Uh, she can speak in a male voice, or he can speak in a female voice. I oh, guess. and interestingly enough, if it goes for web search, it now uses Bing by default. Oh uh, yes, that that was the big deal. Interesting. Um, Microsoft paid for that one, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure a lot, <laughs> but it, it'll drive traffic to them. I don't doubt it. Um, let's see. We talked about AirDrop sending files between Macs and iPhones, but only if you're on an iPhone 5 and you're on the mm-hmm. same Wi-Fi network. Um, iTunes Radio. Now, we there have been a lot of rumors about this iRadio uh, leading up to the announcement, their Spotify killer. Um, it almost ended up being a smaller part of the event. They kind of just slipped it in there with iOS. Uh, yeah. What it is is it's essentially... It's a service that's free for everyone, uh, though you do see ads unless you subscribe to iTunes Match, which I believe is still $25 a year. Um, And it offers radio stations similar to Pandora. Um, You can create radio stations based on songs, artists. Um, It uses the information in your library to create tracks. You can then share your stations with friends and listen to them. Um, Is anyone excited about this, dying to use it? So it actually it works on iOS seven iTunes. Oh good. Um, so how's have you used it at all? Yeah, I use it a little. I mean it's like it's like radio, it's like Pandora or something, but it, I mean it works pretty well. I'm i the stations it generated for me were were decent, though my, my iTunes library like is pretty sparse because I I use Spotify. But I, I mean, like, it's good, and I think for people who like that kind of thing, it'll be good. Um, but I don't, you know, it's, it's that's really not the way I like to listen to music, anyway. So, it's not killing Spotify for me. There are a lot of people for whom iTunes is like their life. <laughs> they haven't even heard of Spotify or RDO or Pandora, so for them, that's going to be huge. Mm. And I think I think Apple will sell a lot of iTunes match subscriptions that way. Yeah. No, if if I use like twenty five dollars a year is incredibly reasonable. It's cheaper than Pandora. Pandora's thirty six a year. And, so. and Spotify. Yeah. 
<laughs> so no, I mean it's you know it's a streaming service and it helps that it's kind of easily integrated uh, into the system. But yeah, I think like it's, it's just there. It's more of a value add than something I'm going to switch from Spotify to or something I'm going to go out of my way yeah. to use. It just, I think the nice bigger thing there. is that that from a few weeks ago on iTunes you can listen to a whole album before you buy it now and just stream it straight from the store. Wow. I don't know if that's for all song or all albums, but some of them, or at least the new ones, something like that. Like the new, I know for the, they debuted it with the new Daft Punk thing, and you could listen to the entire album straight through. You could either stop it or just play it uh, for free, though. So that's pretty great, especially because you'll get things there that aren't on Spotify. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's, especially that's not right away. That's certainly true. Yeah, the, the, I mean that's that's the one problem with Spotify. Like some of the big big name artists like hold stuff off it for months. Like Taylor Swift, she kills me every time she's got a new <laughs> single. I gotta wait like weeks because I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, uh, a lot of Taylor Swift fans here. Okay. Um... That's most of the major features in iOS 7. Uh, again, the thing you're most likely to notice is the uh, visual overhaul. So any final thoughts, Dan, pro or con? Are you excited? Are you down? I'm excited to have enough money to buy a developer subscription to try it out. <laughs> so you're not even going to wait for the fall? Uh, we'll see. You should see if you can get... You can expense it for it. Ah, that's... <laughs> We'll see. It's a work-related some, expense. Some necessary testing needs to be done. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, but speaking of that, there is no I, uh, iPad version, which is also that speaks to the beta ness of it. Oh yeah, no, it it is it's super beta. Like it works for the most part, but it crashes a lot. Um, and that's so. important to note because we could see a lot of changes by the time the launch actually happens. Yeah. Yes, I, I expect to see quite a few. Colby, um, final thoughts? Uh, quick question, Colby. Do you think they'll sure. change the icons? I don't know. I kind of hope so, because I don't think they're good. I mean, I think, like, I appreciate that they're changing them to go, like, to do the, for this new look, but, like, I don't think they quite got it right yet. So, okay. we'll see. Dan, I will make a prediction right here, right now. That they can add features. They can remove features. I The design will stay exactly the same on launch. <laughs> I think okay. they're. I think they are way too proud of that. I think they are way too excited about it. I don't think the design is going to change one bit. I, I agree, yeah. but I think the icons might. It change. should. <laughs> but <laughs> it'll I be easier to change the icons than design. But you know, the, icon the second, is just the static file and the. I know. Well, I'm not that. saying technologically. I'm saying PR wise. The second they and change it, one thing, immediately Apple screwed up. Apple did it wrong. That's oh, true. Ooh, yeah. all these people complained, and now Apple. That's lame. You know, where's Steve Jobs when you need him? You know, the, it's just going to rain down. I They they can't. They won't. All right. That's, anyway, that's sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. I think, like, I'm excited that, that they're doing so, such drastic stuff. I think that, like, it's good to see because the last few WWDCs have just been, like, okay, thanks for nothing. It was definitely a big show. Yeah, yeah. And, like, they fixed some nice, like, annoying stuff, but, like, it's 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 something new, and that's, like, it's good to see. I like it. Outstanding. Okay. Well, then I guess we're going to move off of Apple to their staunch competitor, uh, Google, and we're going to talk about the story comes from the New York Times, uh, though has been widely announced everywhere, that Google has decided to buy Israeli startup uh, social mapping software app ways uh, for upwards of one quite the title one billion <laughs> yes it's all right in the it's colon and then all that um, <laughs> it said uh, numbers have been quoted all around roughly one billion I'm seeing 1.03 reported in because yeah, everyone wants to be bigger than Instagram it's got to be one point something billion I, I love how it's the point oh three billion yeah um, <laughs> doesn't matter yeah. as long as you're worth more than an Instagram it's a win. That's right. <laughs> Lord knows what Instagram's worth today. Um, so let's see. They announced on Tuesday they had closed the deal um, last Tuesday, so a week ago. Uh, Waze has a user base of about 50 million users. Uh, the app itself, the way it works for those who aren't familiar, is uh, it takes your data as you drive along to create sort of a social map. You can 
a tag thing, such as a police officer on the side of the road, an accident, a road closure, and then it alerts everyone around you. Um, I've used Waze for a long time. I actually did a project on it for Marist, a redesign project, um, and I, I absolutely love Waze. Uh, the rumor is that Google is going to use them to create data for their Google Maps, um, including real-time traffic data and uh, flagging of alerts. Um, thoughts? I think it's one of the few things that Google Maps is missing is that, like, oh, uh, even just construction and potholes and things like that, road oh. closures. Road closures are almost never, even when there's construction for, like, three months, where it's, like, or three weeks, like, somewhere in Connecticut, there's this, uh, in New Haven, there's this on-ramp that's closed, and every time I've been in New Haven, Google Maps is, I've had to, like, pass it, and then it has to recalculate, because it always tries to put me over it, and it doesn't know. And this isn't like a, a one afternoon thing either. So I think that'll help them out a lot. I, I think Google's traffic data is already really good. I've People have told me and I've read that it's supposed to adjust your route as you go, which it doesn't seem to. Or maybe it's never worth it. Uh, but if they could do that, that would be pretty awesome. So if they're putting you through an area that turns into heavy traffic, it will change your route and tell you to go around it. That would be cool. I'm excited. I'm not sure if they will uh, roll them into Google Maps or not, though. Did they say if they, they were or not? They announced in the, the announcement that they intend to keep uh, Waze as a separate entity and to let them continue to develop on their own just to merely take their data. Now, of course, a lot of companies have announced that and changed their minds later on, but at least in the short term, I don't think Waze think users should a smart be move. panicking. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big user base to just, like, pull the rug out from under them, you know? They have experience in that, though. Google? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have the biggest user base, and they consistently pull the rug out from us. Google. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's... Um... Yeah, it's it's just, I think it's, a, it's an obvious feature in the age of smartphones to have users participating in the mapping process, and um, I drive on the Taconic back and forth all the time, Police Officer Haven, and I can't tell you how many times other users has flagged it, um, or even it's changed my route automatically um, oh, cool. to save time, so I've gotten a lot of use out of it. Um, <laughs> Imagine if it could change your route, like, to avoid speed traps. <laughs> it can, you can report speed traps in the app. Nice. So it's, you know... I think it's something Google needs. It's just a matter of how they actually go through and do it. Um, and good on ways. Good for you guys. Cool. <laughs> Make, making, that, making that billion with a B. Yep. Where it counts. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> it is a good day. Um, okay. I see here in the... Uh, all right. I think we can do one more story and then our pick. So do you guys want to do NSA or Google's Internet Balloons? Oh, man. That's such a hard choice. That is, that but is, really, all the Google Internet balloons is the ability for the NSA to spy in Africa. So. Whoa! Yeah, that's, that's Combining true. stories! <laughs> that. Boom! <laughs> wow, that was good. All right, well, we can talk briefly about yeah. balloons and go to the NSA. The basic, okay, uh, cool. Colby, why don't you explain what's going on with uh, Google's <laughs> Internet balloons? Well, basically, they, they, I guess, came up with this crazy idea of instead of using, like, cell towers to distribute 3G around the entire world, they could use balloons instead. So they're they're sending balloons up into the sky over New Zealand and beta testing this like this it's a, it's essentially a 3G network from what I understood, but I don't know if it works over a Wi Fi or something. Maybe so it does. I, I watched all the videos. Oh, okay. So it's not. It's above the sky. It's in the stratosphere. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like above the weather. It's yeah, it's ten kilometers above where planes fly, for example, and so and they can control it by moving the satellite between two different air currents. One is going this way, and the other is going this way. So they can kind of keep it stationary by moving up and down. Uh, and what else? So. If you want to use this, you have to hook this bulb thing up to your house, which receives the signal, and then it's like an ISP, and then you have like a, a wireless router to use Wi-Fi or something like that. So, and oh, okay. I think that's about it. 
they can pretty much last, stay in the sky, from what I understand, as long as they actually like physically hold up. And they can just stay up there and pow, entirely solar powered. Yeah, it's pretty That's, cool. That is super cool. I I would hate to be the business manager at Google who has to sit down and look at an Excel spreadsheet and be like, how much are we spending on internet balloons? <laughs> like, it's somewhere, someone has to tell these people, like, you're a business and you're supposed to make money. And yes, you make a lot of well, money in advertising, but that doesn't mean it's okay to go make internet balloons. It does. It does if it means that they can get the other 2 billion people who aren't on the internet looking at their ads. That's, that's a pie-in-the-sky dream. They're, that's Maybe. never going to happen. It worked for Google Chrome, man. It's being practical. Chrome was not as ridiculous as internet balloons. <laughs> it's true, but there are plenty of halfway decent open source browsers before Chrome came along. But Google knew they could make one faster. And, and I've observed this in my industry experience. If you can make something five milliseconds faster, you'll make more money, like an appreciable amount more if you're pushing a product. And uh, Google's pushing a product on almost every page on the internet, and that's there are little ads everywhere. So if they make every website five milliseconds faster to load, that means you're going to look at that many more websites per day, which is however many per month, per year, times however many people are on the Internet. I'm sure the investment in Chrome has paid off. And if this works, I'm sure this investment will pay off. All right, so, so we heard it here first. Dan Miller saying Internet balloons are the future. I think I think next like from now on we should have like the Dan predicts segment. <laughs> Where he just makes outlandish <laughs> predictions that will never happen. And then like in in later episodes, self-driving we can... cars and glasses. Those are now, but that's, that's already true. happening. Yeah, but that's the same thing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> We're never gonna have self-driving cars. I do want wow. Google Glass though. But you, okay. you want Google so Glass and not a self-driving car. I like driving. I really enjoy it. I don't need a car to do it for me. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, okay. <laughs> who now? Who put the NSA in the dock? Was that Dan? Dan, Dan, you you take this away. Okay. Tell us the story. Uh, I don't know the whole story. At some point, <laughs> I don't know how the story started. At some point, there was a newspaper article claiming that. Yeah, Edward say, Snowden was a. I'll I'll jump in and. All right, wait, wait. But did it start? It didn't start with that. It started with that, or did it start with Verizon? The Verizon thing was a separate thing that happened before. But it's and, the same. But no one knew they were the same. Oh, okay. And then that's when Eric Snowden came in, uh, or Edward Snowden. Right. So the and, original story was that, I think it was at first reported that the NSA could listen to any phone call they wanted to and then it was the NSA can look at numbers and who they call so they can build a social graph of cell phone users in the United States uh, okay and then this Edward Snowden guy who used to work for the NSA as a contractor in IT uh, released some or gave a bunch of stuff to the Guardian who in turn released a couple PowerPoint slides I think like three yeah, which detailed this prison program. I don't know what those said, but the reaction was the NSA can has direct access, quote, to collect, which is also a very important word, information from Google and Facebook and Yahoo and places like that. And so since then, I've read a lot about this. And I think from a technical standpoint, the thing that makes the most sense, and this is complete credit to uh, Steve Gibson, who wrote about this, is so all these companies came out and said that, that this isn't happening. Google and Facebook both said, we, you know, whoa. I think the, the Google fa blog post was like, what the, or something like that. Completely shocked. And they're like, oh, we don't do this. And so but then I think the Guardian released more documents that explicitly said that they did or something. And so I, there is a, way, or a universe in which no one is lying and everyone's telling the truth here. And that is if the NSA has direct access to all of the major backbone providers, so AT&T, Verizon, and Level 2, I think, is one. So all of the companies that control 
the way the internet comes into and out of the United States across these major undersea cables. If you had a, uh, and that's all fiber optic, which is important. So if you had direct access to those fiber optic cables and you could implement a crazy technology called a splitter and turn that one fiber optic cable into two and just looped it back into the NSA data center, then you will have split light like a prism does, and you could just suck down all of the data that's coming into and out of the United States, which is probably most of the data at large. So, and the other thing is, is that Google and Facebook and all of these major internet companies that have their own physical data centers, they're not leasing them, have these things called peering relationships. So, you know, Google doesn't own the internet. It has its own, it has a lot of computers and their network together, but if Google's servers wants to talk to Facebook servers, they have to go out of Google's little bubble and over a bunch of other people's stuff into wherever Facebook's data center is. And so if the NSA had any access to those places in between, any unencrypted traffic, it could just pull down. And what we think they're doing is copying all of it, so storing every, not only the current state of the internet, which I found out that the State Department has a copy of the internet for emergency purposes, which is pretty smart. Uh, but cool. not the, not just the current state of the internet, but every possible, every state the internet has ever been in, every packet ever sent for some amount of time. So they can go back and replay any conversation or look at any transaction that occurred. Which has a lot of privacy implications. If we still think privacy is a thing, I guess we can talk about that. But also has a lot of international relations because so many of what goes through the US internet is not taking place between two US citizens. And in the past it's been kind of frowned upon to like for the US to spy on like French citizens. It's kind of like a I wouldn't say an act of war, but an act of aggression, like if the French police bust down someone's door and find a bunch of US like wiretaps in there. It's like uh you're not supposed to do that if we don't tell you to, sort of thing. So that's another side story here that I think is interesting that no one's talking about. But that's all I know. And Edward Snowden sounds like a very interesting person who did not graduate from college, or was it high school, or both? I think uh, it was both. Both. Clearly very intelligent. Clearly, uh, I think he made hundreds of thousands of dollars, like mid-200,000 a year. Lived in Hawaii. Uh, clearly had a lot going for him and still decided to seek asylum in China, which <laughs> is pretty, is a great idea. I mean, don't get me wrong, brilliant. China is probably, especially now given the cyber warfare tensions between the U.S. and China, the least likely country to ever cooperate with the U.S. in this matter. Uh, very interesting. There's a great quick interview with Steve Wozniak in an airport where he talks as only Steve Wozniak can very passionately about this and he's he's just look exclaiming in the airport when did this when did this happen when did people multiple people in the past few years seek political asylum from the United States in a communist country but you know he was talking about when his dad he was like dad why is the Soviet Union bad he's like oh because they spy on their civilians and they tell them what to do, and no one has any free choice, and there are no secrets. And, you know, that's why it's bad. We don't want to live in a society like that, and our Constitution has all these safeguards in place to prevent that from happening to us with the civil liberties and all of these things. And Steve Wozniak makes the point that now, in, in practice, we are no different from them. And it takes very little to push that into, like, in, in uh, our ideology we are no different. But we're not saying that that's okay. Publicly we say you shouldn't do that. We're currently doing it. So the question becomes in 20 years does that become a thing that everyone's okay with where they're like alright we'll trade these liberties for a little bit of security from the terrorists or do the citizens of the United States say oh no that's not quite how we imagine living our lives. And that's the big story I think.
Yeah. I don't pay attention enough to the mainstream media news to know if anyone's picking up on that or if anyone cares. Hopefully they do. I mean, I think they've been they've been talking about it at least, which is it's nice. For for a while they just talked about Edward Snowden, which was annoying, but then they kind of stopped it. At least on NPR, they <laughs> stopped and started talking about like like what is actually going to happen now. But it's I don't know. It's 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 pretty weird. I don't like. Uh, I don't know what what will or could possibly happen to change it. Like, well, I watched so the uh, one of the congressional hearings, and they had the General Alexander from the NSA in there, and it was just so it was so double talk the yeah. entire time. One of uh, he said at one point, I think in the past, he said unequivocally, and apparently the way these things work is that if you're an important dude and you're giving a presentation to Congress, all the questions are submitted to you beforehand, and they're read out for ceremony on C-SPAN. Yeah. So he knows all the questions, and he has a written response prepared for all of them. And one of them a few months ago was, do you listen to calls in the United States? Of, do you listen to the calls placed by United States citizens without a court warrant? And the answer was, no, at least not willingly. And since then, I think the word was something like, that was the least incorrect answer I could give you at the time, or something like that. So it's, it's impossible to have any meaningful debate because you can't talk about any of it in public. And all, all of, if, you're, if, you were, if you were to find out that this was happening to you, you couldn't tell anyone, or you'd be arrested for treason. And if you wanted, if you, even if you did find out, and you were like, you know, I've done nothing wrong, this is illegal, and you went into this FISA court, the, those hearings would never be made public or even acknowledge that they happened. So <laughs> all these decisions as to whether or not this can happen are secret, and no one knows what the rules are, except the people who know them and can't talk about them. Right. Like, it, it, that's, a, that's what gets me is like... <laughs> It's like I understand that there are some things that maybe it's better if you know no one knows like you know I don't know like the nuclear launch codes right but like what ex it's, it seems to me that the reason they don't want to talk about the extent of this surveillance is because it would it would have some some serious like international implications and like they don't want to talk about it which probably means it's it's questionable right like i mean i don't know it's but i i think that's a root problem and i th like how are we supposed to get anywhere if no one can talk about what's actually happening and yeah. And so we either just let this go or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you fix that. It's like, it's like deadlock. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Two other things that amaze me about this is that even if they are collecting all this data, which is, which is in itself technically amazing, mind boggling, just to <laughs> write all this information down fast enough to keep up with it is how they it, they can do any analysis in search of it at all is yeah. just incredible. Yeah. But if I were a bad guy, and I know they say all oh, bad guys are stupid, but if I were a bad guy, and if in and if I was stupid, the thing that would give me at this point more protection than talking over the internet would be sending a letter. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. They can't true. read your mail. <laughs> that's true. It is. It's like. Well, that's just a case of the laws needing to catch up with the technology. But the government doesn't want the laws to catch no. up. No. <laughs> oh, you're totally right. And, and courts have even there have been court cases about opening emails and and how long they have to be on a server before you can legally open them without a warrant. And most of it's gone against the case of privacy. Um, I I'll jump in with my thoughts, um, and I have many. Um, okay. My my first is um, I I really don't care about this. 
Uh, and I, I know that sounds crass, and maybe I'm one of those guys, oh, you're giving up your freedoms. I really don't care, mainly because I'm not breaking the law, and when I do, maybe I'll care more. So I have, I have a response to this when you're <laughs> done with this point. Okay, hold that thought. Uh, second, um, the key thing here for me is aggregate. I don't think anyone's looking at my data. I think everyone's looking at all the data and filtering out the bad stuff. So that really doesn't bother me. Three, if you're really worried about this, just encrypt your data. It's not hard. Is it? I don't I don't actually know how you do that. But it, It's not hard, but it is impossible through Facebook. Like, we, we can't tell Facebook to encrypt well, our data. Well, don't commit when crimes it, through Facebook. I, I know. All email right, is one right. thing, but, you know. And email is almost impossible to encrypt. Yes, it is. If you can encrypt your email, but you probably can't email anyone else. Right. <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm dumb, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. I don't mind the fact that if the NSA can really prove that what they're doing has actually stopped crime and saved lives, and my data is sitting on some enormous server in a mountain somewhere for the rest of time, so be it. Yeah. I, but, but... I'm very apathetic about a lot of things. So, Colby, please please tell right. me I'm wrong. All right. So, here's my thing. Like, I'm, you know, it's always been the case that given a legitimate inquiry for a criminal investigation or something, right, the government can go and retroactively get data or, you know, wiretap your phone if if the courts deem it necessary to to catch you and doing whatever terrible thing you're doing. And I'm fine with that. And I'm also fine, not fine with, but I'm okay with the fact that that is going to get more powerful and quicker and given, given the current state of technology, right? So I'm willing to accept that the government could go, like, you know, ask Facebook for your message log, or they could, you know, ask Facebook for because because I've I'm a suspected like arms dealer or something crazy they could like ask for a live feed of my my Facebook activity right um, I'm okay with that but what I'm not okay with is like and I mean we don't even know if this is actually happening because we have no idea what's happening right I'm not okay with them not only proactively going through my shit and your shit and everyone's shit but not even going through it, just storing it for later. Because, I mean, what if what happens if we get to a point where something we're doing now is not illegal, but in 15 years it's illegal, and they start going back, and they have all the data, so it I did it, right? You know, like, I, I don't know, you know, say we have some crazy Christian state, like, like we become the Iran of Jesus, <laughs> right no, but like and I, you know I take the Lord's name in vain all the time <laughs> and I, I, I've certainly done it on Facebook so and, and they go back and you know they throw me in jail for it or they cut my head off for it for something I did today when it wasn't illegal I mean it's 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 that kind of stuff that gets weird and the other thing that for another technical story that comes out of this, so NSA developed a thing called SE Linux, which is supposed to give you very fine-grained access controls over files and things, and it's just crazy and super complicated and impossible to use, but really well done. Another thing that Ed Snowden ended up talking about in one of these many interviews, someone explicitly asked him, like, could you, a non-governmental contractor have, like, looked at all of my emails. Like, yes, absolutely. Because the access controls just weren't there. They were so low that anyone with access to the system could just look at anything you've ever done. And there's no reason for someone from the CIA or the FBI or whoever had access to just go through their old, like, ex-girlfriends, all the things. And that's not okay. But and there's no reason that we would not. We'll never know how much that happened now. I just I. I don't know. I feel almost bad for saying it, but it's I. I trust our government, and yes, I think there are problems in the system, and and we don't actually really know for sure what's going on. I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but this Snowden guy strikes me as someone who wants a lot of attention, but. You know, I don't know if that's true, and I'm sure a lot of what he says is true. Um, I just think that 
on concept alone, I'm not really offended by it. In practice, oh yeah, there were a lot of problems. Um, I just don't... I think that with the proper safeguards and used in the proper way, I think technology like this isn't inherently bad. It's the way you use it. Um, now, domestic versus international and who we're looking at specifically, that's, you know, arguments to be made there. But I just think this idea that, oh no, the government is looking in on everything we do. Well, you know, they've been tracking phone calls for how long? And they've been, you know, you, you, can't, you can't really be surprised. And it's just going to keep happening. I mean, it's also, a, like, I think it's a matter of, like, setting a precedent now and moving forward. Like, what is, you know, after 9-11, like, our government tends to, and and us as a people, we're very reactionary. So, like, this, this terrible, terrible thing happened. Um, and, you know, Congress passed the Patriot Act without you know, without so much as a second thought. And it was, I mean, there, it, it was pretty drastic. There, There's some crazy stuff in there that was not, would not have, I, at least I think, I don't think they would have been, been able to pass such sweeping, like, legislation like that in, in another, in, a, a more, in calmer circumstances, right? So, yeah. but, I mean, the thing is, if you, if we set the precedent now that this is okay, like this is the new standard of what's okay, what happens the next time something like that happens? Because realistically, something bad's going to happen again, right? And so, like, what are they go- like? What happens the next time? Like, what do they say is just like, let's do the- everything we possibly can within the limits of reason. Like, we're, we shift what is reasonable when things like this happen. So. So, I mean, to, like, it's, I guess that's what's scary, is it, like, you see it, you, you see it creeping, like, farther and farther into, into, it, you know, towards something you might not be okay with. And at the same time as, like, you know, things like Google Glass are happening, like, um, you know, which is cool from a consumer standpoint, but also, like, creepy. Like, if they could just, like, pop on your Google Glass remotely and stream what you're seeing, you know? And, uh, like, I, obviously, it's not, like... I think you're right in... in Like, I also, for, for the most part, I trust our government right now. But, it, it, like, you really... You can't know how much you'll trust your government tomorrow or in a year or in 10 years. And, and like, you know, we like the, these kind of things have more implications than just tomorrow, I guess. And I would also be okay with it if they could do it with a public court order. Oh yeah. On the record and said, you know, we're going to go through this massive collection of data we have for, Dan Miller's stuff because we suspect him of this and we're putting it out there and you're, you know, turn yourself in sort of thing. That's fine. Right. But don't do it without telling anyone or not being able to tell anyone. And I hope with this leak now they can say, well, now everyone knows a program exists, so the least we can do is right. have, like, public, uh, you know, records about it. So basically we're not saying don't panic. We're saying panic a little. Yes. You Panic should, you should be reason. panicking just a bit. Panic to your local congressman. <laughs> yes. Loudly Pan- and with a snail mail so they can't read it. <laughs> so Panic now so we don't really have to panic later. <laughs> Sold. Okay. Uh, why don't we move on to our picks of the week? Um, we're going to do this every week, and I think it's a cool idea, and each week we're going to take a look at what hardware we're using, what apps we're using, something cool we saw, um, just whatever we want to highlight that week. Um, Dan, why don't you start off with yours? I was really surprised when I saw this one. I'm dying to <laughs> I have to say. This is, I'm excited. Uh, so it's this thing called Coinstar, and they exist in a lot of grocery stores and other things like that. And basically what you do, you take your giant can of change, coinage, and you just dump it in this machine and watch yourself make money. And I didn't actually... So I spent an entire day last week going through and rolling a bunch of quarters 
and bringing them to the bank because my mom said there was a transaction fee. Then we had almost the same amount of pennies in terms of volume, and I was like, I'm not rolling these. We don't even have. We ran out of the little tape things, so uh, I'm just going to bring them to Coinstar, and they can take whatever. Turns out that it doesn't take anything out if you print, say, an Amazon gift certificate or an iTunes gift certificate, which was a no-brainer. So there's a zero percent transaction fee. So uh, my pick is Coinstar. You got a lot of coins lying around, and you want to make like $120 in a day, like I did, and just—it's so much fun to just dump it in and watch, <laughs> like, watch the money go up and hear the clinking and uh, so much fun. And it definitely, so. I know the standard cash fee is 9.7 cents on the dollar, which is a lot. Uh, it's almost yeah. 10%. So and an Amazon gift card, it's as good as cash. Yeah, yep. it's like you can get <laughs> cash and lose 10% or get an Amazon gift card and still be able to buy anything in the entire world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's that's some helpful consumer advice. There you go. Cool. Um. Okay, uh, Colby, your, we kind of already talked about so, your pick. Yeah, we did. I, I have a different pick if, okay. if we can. Um, so so I've, been, I've probably told you guys about this before, but I, I've, for a while I've been using this, this website called kipped.com, and it's like, a, it's like a bookmarking service. Like There are six million of them. Um, but it's, it's really cool because it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's like, it's like an aggregate. It's like a bookmark aggregate. So not only does is there a little Chrome extension that you can like, you know, pop open and save a link to read later or just save it forever, but it, it pulls in like all your links from like Read It Later or Instapaper or the links you favorite on Twitter or if you use GitHub, it pulls in your starred repositories and stuff. So it pulls in all this stuff that you're that you're favoriting or or wanting to remember for some, whatever reason from the greater internet and then you can search <laughs> through it later it's 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 actually the greatest thing i've ever started using like i i've i've cuz i always used to like i'd remember something i was like god i read something about this 3 months ago and then i try and like i can't find it you spend in, hours in, searching your Chrome history. Yes. And Google search history, yeah. And, and, and the search, <laughs> the Chrome history is so hard to read yeah. and search and do anything with. So it's really, it's changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what is it called and how do you spell it? Kipped. It's K I P P T dot com. Nice. It's super cool. And I actually, they have like a pro account now and I upgraded. And for some reason, like my account broke, so I couldn't access it for three days. But they were very nice, and they fixed it. Um, so that was cool. I cool. was excited. Signing yeah. up now. All right, kipt.com. Check it out. It's what all the cool kids are doing. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, my pick this week is a hardware pick, and it was my birthday gift to myself uh, because I'm the best kind of birthday gifts, isn't it? Um, and it is the Logitech UE mobile boombox. Um, this is a mobile Bluetooth speaker. And I moved into my new apartment, and I wanted a way to play music easily. I didn't want to get a dock for my iPhone, because that's where I play on my music office. So I said, I'm going to do a Bluetooth speaker. We're going to go wireless. But I did not want to spend the $200, $300 of something like a... Uh, Jambox or something really much more expensive that does the same thing. So I, I did my homework, I did my reviews, and everyone said you got to do the Logitech UE. Um, it's a small, it's about the size of an iPhone. So, you know, you can kind of see it's about the same size, so it's pretty small. Um, but wow, does this thing put out really good sound. Now, I live in a small studio, so I've never used it in any kind of like outdoors or any large environment, but uh, the sound it puts out is awesome. It connects via Bluetooth. Uh, to your phone, I find it connects very fast and very easily. Um, simple volume controls on the top. It charges via uh, micro USB, which is great because um, I have a million of those cables lying around. Um, it, it doesn't do a hundred things. It just does one thing really well: play great sound. I do uh, audio podcasts off of it. I hear everything well. It plays music great, Pandora, um, my iTunes music, you name it. Um, and I just really like it because it has a very small size. 
uh, but puts out a lot of great music. Now, there are different versions of this. There's a bigger one that's a little more expensive, but I guess has better sound. Um, there's a waterproof version as well. You can spend a little more. Um, but this is the Logitech UE Boombox, mobile boombox. It is $99.99 on Amazon. It comes in a variety of fun colors. Um, and for the price, uh, you absolutely cannot beat it if you want great mobile Bluetooth sound in a nice small portable package. 10-hour battery. It'll last you all day. Wow, so, that's a lot of hours. Yeah, I've, I usually keep it plugged in a lot of the time, so I've never actually tr- put that to the test. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to take their word for it because all their other promises have paid off. It has, a, cool. uh, has a microphone in it as well, so you can use it as a speakerphone. Um, I've never done that, but it's just an extra feature. So really great. I recommend yeah. it. That's my pick. That's cool. That's cool. That's a, that's a, I have I have one of the jam boxes, and it's like it's great, but it was really expensive, which was silly. It was an no. impulse buy. It went with my shelf. Do that as opposed to like AirPlay with your own set of speakers. Yeah, you know, if I had like an Apple TV or my own set of speakers or something, I probably would have done that. But I wanted to go with Bluetooth, not just for this, but I actually have an old Android phone that mm. um, I'm actually gonna get. <laughs> I like to sing in the shower, so I'm actually going to get a waterproof <laughs> case for the uh, for the old Android phone and use it as a uh, as a nice. shower music player. No, that's like the it. dream. So, mm-hmm. and with Bluetooth, it kind of works <laughs> with everything. That's kind of the advantage. Okay. Yeah. Of doing it that that's way, true. but you could definitely do it via AirPlay. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Well, unless does anyone have anything else they want to pitch before we wrap up today's show? No. Um, no, I don't. I don't know. That was fun. We should. That do it was again. great. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking next week. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm also I'm pretty impressed with the Google Hangouts. Like, this yeah, works. this has worked really well. It's Google like Hangouts it is, is awesome. It is not like my my what it, I have in my brain is the usual video chat experience. Like <laughs> I I'm looking at you Skype. Yeah, like, very well done. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> so yeah. and I love all the apps with the screen sharing and the and all that. It's very full featured. It's, Yep, it's we could like we could refer to a YouTube video and play it in the thing, and it would show up. I think. On yep. the, on, yeah. 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 Cool. I was showing Colby before they have um, presets. Like I can do a little uh, a Whoa. little banner down the bottom. What? Yeah, is that neat? We, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. So. Oh my uh, gosh, that's so legit. Yeah. So <sighs> it's a lot of fun. So we'll we'll have fun with that. Uh, nice. Okay, well, with that, uh, I want to let everyone know who is listening live. We record this every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, uh, and it's also available online somewhere to be determined in the future. We don't we don't know where we're having TV it hosted gate. yet, right? It'll, if it'll only we online. knew some people who could write code and make a website. Uh, what? No, we'll, <laughs> we'll get it up. Once, we'll, once we'll, you're, yeah. Yeah, we're going to take care of it. It'll be on iTunes, and we'll have a website and, and all the fun stuff. So, uh, Super legit. We've, we've peaked at three live viewers. Really? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've had live viewers. Yeah, I got a little, there's a little tally. I told some people. Wow. <laughs> I, I didn't even think to tell anyone. <laughs> I'm such a... That's all right. <laughs> I should have tweeted about it or something. Jeez. Ah, man. Next time, right. See, but now next time our, our viewership will triple and it'll feel great. So, well, this was like our beta episode, and next week we're really it, gonna blow them out of the water. It, it was just a test to see if it actually worked. <laughs> Boy, did it! And so, with that, we remind you: don't panic. We'll be back next week. Thank you for watching. Peace. Good night.